Hello everyone, welcome to my office. Uh, this is just going to be a short video today. I actually almost didn't record a video today. Since I got back from my snowboarding trip in Chamonix in France, uh, I've been feeling a little bit run down really, low energy and a bit kind of just crap really. So yeah, I, I struggled to bring myself to record a video, but I thought I said I would upload a video every Tuesday and every Friday, so I need to stick with that. So I am making the effort and I hadn't shared any of the photos that I did take in the French Alps and as well as enjoying myself snowboarding, I did have my camera with me and I did take some photos as well. So I thought I would share those photos. But yeah, like I say, since I got back, I have been feeling a little bit run down. Um, in my younger days, I used to be able to go away snowboarding with my friends. We'd get up early, spend the whole day snowboarding, every day snowboarding. So then of course you've got the upper ski and we'd go out every night and get drunk every night. Uh, go to bed at like two o'clock in the morning and then get up early to go snowboarding the next day. And I definitely cannot do that anymore. Now I did go snowboarding every day, but even just Admittedly, I did drink every day, but only like a couple of a couple of drinks. I certainly didn't get drunk, um, but even just that just really took it out of me. And I guess I wasn't eating as well. You know, I was on holiday, so I wasn't eating as well as usually would. Didn't eat a lot of fruit, you know, eating out in bars and restaurants. And come back to me. So yeah, uh, felt a bit run down by the end of it and I've even got a cold sore on my cheek I think from like the cold and the wind from snowboarding I've ended up with like a cold sore on my cheek who knew you could even get cold sores on your cheek uh, so that's one reason why I'm wearing a hat in this video just to try and hide my disgusting face as much as I can but let's get to the point uh yeah thought I would share some of my photos from the French Alps as I didn't in the previous video now as I said in my previous video snowboarding is another big big passion of mine it's kind of almost on a part of photography i love it so much and one of the things i love about it aside from just the fun of sliding down a mountain really quickly i just absolutely love uh, just being in the mountains and being surrounded by all of that magnificent landscape when you get the lift right to the top of one of the peaks and just look at the vistas around you, it's just absolutely spectacular. And Chamonix is, itself is certainly one of the most beautiful resorts there is. It's very, very traditional, very old. It's, it's a town in its own right. Um, it was an old historic town like before it was even a, a ski resort. So it's a really, really beautiful traditional town and then surrounded by these spectacular mountains uh, Mont Blanc overlooks Chamonix and uh, it's an absolutely beautiful beautiful place so snowboarding holidays for me just combined like literally everything that I love um, just the mountains I love snow the actual fun of the snowboarding and uh, just this amazing amazing vistas and landscape I, I love it that being said I actually found it a little bit difficult to get some really good photos despite being surrounded by such an amazing landscape I actually found it surprisingly difficult to get good photos obviously part of that was because i was enjoying myself snowboarding so that that was kind of distracting and i didn't spend as long taking photos if i would if it was just obviously a general photography trip but also when i was on slopes i was struggling sometimes struggling sometimes to find like some foreground interest and a lot of the times there'd be a lot of poles or fencing from the resort that would kind of get in the way and ruin the shot or um, just skiers just generally standing around talking discussing which route they were going to go and things like that also during the day when I was snowboarding um, the first day I snowboarded there was like zero zero visibility it was an awful day i basically i found it very difficult to snowboard i didn't do much snowboarding that day at all because you literally couldn't see see a thing but every day after that was just blue skies really beautiful conditions 
um, beautiful for snowboarding in, but not necessarily the best for photography. There wasn't any drama in the sky and yeah, just kind of flat light. So yeah, surprisingly, it was a bit of a challenge to get some, some great photos despite being in such an incredible location. And that's one of the challenges of landscape photography. Often things can look amazing when you, st when you stood there, but then actually trying to represent that in a two-dimensional image, um, it often doesn't come across. And just because something looks amazing to the eye when you're stood there, it doesn't always translate to a, to a good photo. And that's one of the challenges of landscape ph photography. However, once I got home and went through my photos and edited them, there are some that I'm happy with. Uh, this one that I have on my screen now, for example, probably one of my favorites, kind of really shows, shows a lot of the textures in the, in the mountain. And you can, see the, you can see the detail in the snow and it kind of, I think, gets across uh, the impressive rugged terrain of the mountains. But one thing I noticed when I was editing these photos as well is how, how good they look in black and white actually. Now I do not do black and white at all. I am all about color in my photography. I'm very much driven by color. I love color. And it's kind of, it's one of the things I want to be known for. Um, in terms of my own personal style, I want, you know, colorful, strong, vibrant colors. I want that to be part of my style. So I don't do black and white photography. So all the photos that I, that I will be sharing on my Instagram and things, I will be sharing them in color. But that being said, I did notice, um, so this photo that I have on screen now, for example, if I just convert that to black and white, it does look really good. It works really well as a black and white image. And mountain scenes in particular do look really good in black and white. If you think of um, Ansel Adams, for example, um, obviously I, I know he was working with black and white film, it was a different time, but one of the reasons why his photographs are so iconic is because black and white really, there's an ice cream van going past. Yeah, if you think of Ansel, I, <laughs> I got distracted by that ice cream van there. Yeah, if you think of Ansel Adams, um, all of his iconic photographs were in black and white. And the reason why mountainous scenes look so good in black and white is that taking away all the colour, similar with street photography as well, as some people think that colour is a distracting element. And by converting it into black and white, it really emphasises not just the tones and the contrast, but it really emphasises all that detail and the ruggedness of the terrain. As I've said, I really like this image because it shows a lot of detail and really emphasizes the rugged terrain of the mountain and the, and the snow. And yeah, that comes across in the, in the color image anyway, but if I convert that to black and white, arguably it emphasizes all, all that detail kind of comes across even more and is even more emphasized. There, see, that's the, that's the color one, and that's how I'm going to share this image. But admittedly, I do think all of this ruggedness here and all the detail and sharpness and different textures, I think that's emphasized more in the black and white image. But that being said, because black and white is not part of my brand, I'm not going to share it in black and white. Even though I think arguably it's maybe better, um, it's just not what I'm about. So I'm going to share it in color. And admittedly, if I, if I was going to share this in black and white, I would spend more time converting it properly. Um, I'd play about with all of the tones individually and get it looking exactly how I wanted it. But just for the purpose of this video and just showing you, I just hit the black and white button there and it kind of converts it automatically. Yeah, I just thought that was an interesting thing to show you. If, um, if you're photographing similar scenes to this, uh, mountainous scenes, and you want to focus on all of the, all of the sharp details of the mountain and the, the landscape, then yeah, consider shooting in black and white. I also like this image because there's almost like two layers to it. You've got this mountain in the foreground and then this other large one in the background. So it doesn't feel like a very flat image. 
And yeah, again, that foreground interest is so important. So this mountain in the foreground provides some foreground interest and makes the image feel more three-dimensional. So that one's probably my favorite. And the other ones that I like were actually taken down in the town as the sun was beginning to set. Got some beautiful, beautiful light hitting, hitting the mountains. Obviously they closed the resort before sunset for obvious reasons. So the best light is was once we were off the mountains, which is obviously annoying for a photography point of view, but thankfully I was able to get some nice photos um, taken from the town. Yeah, because every day was clear, um, yeah, it got some really, really nice light hit, hit in the mountains. So thankfully my 18 to 55 millimeter lens did just give me enough zoom to be able to, to zoom in onto the mountain just enough and capture that nice light here in the mountain and that's it i'll now share the rest of my photos from my trip to chamonix i'd love to hear your thoughts on the photos so yeah please put your comments below and let me know what you think as always thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you again soon bye